So let's recap here. We know how much material each one of our bends is per the, uh, per the bend in each die, thanks to the bending gauge. We also know how to create a cheater, so we know how to measure and start all of our bends and whatnot. We also know how to make a boundary style cheater, which is this is not really a cheater, but at the same time it kind of is. Helps us mock up where we're going. We know how to bend on two dimensional planes, flat plane bending. We also know how to do offset bending and bending within a boundary. We've learned about the dies, we've learned a little bit about the tools that we need to use. Now, before I started shooting this episode, I actually put the word out on Instagram and Facebook on the Fabricator Series pages, and I said, what do you guys want to know about tube bending? So I can make probably a pretty good video here. Now, some of the things I'm not able to do, uh, some of the things um, I can just answer flat out here. So we'll pull up some of the questions here. And we'll say, let's see. How do you decide what diameter and wall thickness to go with? Now that is a very, very common question. Now, some of these things that I do, or when you come into fabrication or whatever the case is, some things are, are calculated. Let's say a bash bar, for example, has to be calculated to the loads and stresses and everything else that it does. That's a very, very long video and that's a lot of things that uh, really you kind of need the formal education to go with. But, something like a roll cage, for example, always consult the rule book. The rule book will have every single bit of information that you need to know about it, and that's the only place you need to go to get your answers. So in every single sanction in the class in which you intend to race with, will absolutely have the minimum requirements or all of the requirements for the tubes that you need to use in order to create a roll cage. Now, let's say for instance, you're not going to actually compete in a certain sanction or whatever the case is, and you just want a roll cage that's gonna be safe and whatever the case is. Find the rules, okay? Go back, find a rule book, and build according to that, okay? That's probably the best way that I can say to use that without the formal education of calculating all of this anyway. So even if you did have the education, you still need to know, follow the rule book. Don't listen to anybody else. In print is what the rule is. So the bender is the JD squared model three, same one as he uses, the viewer here. And uh, every time you start a bend, it's about five eighths of an inch off from where you actually want the bend. Yes, mine does the exact same thing. However, the bending reference is what we were using, which I always say is the start at the beginning of my die. That is my bending reference. Now, there is a gap, which in my case is usually about three quarters of an inch away from the beginning of the die to where the first impression actually mates on the tube itself, where it starts its deformation and goes into the bend itself. Now, I only use the beginning of the die as my reference. Okay, I don't calculate it anywhere else from there, but only the beginning of the die. Make sure that your bending reference is the same every single time you bend. That way your bend will still calculate where it needs to be. So if you use the cheater method and you follow along with your bending reference on the piece that you're measuring out, the bend will come out the exact same way every single time. Measuring to match has been a big problem. Uh, well, here's the thing. That really, uh, I can't explain it any other way except for it takes practice. So if you have a plans or a print or anything that you have to uh, measure out or whatever the case is to match, only practice will make it happen. And uh, some of the best ways I've used, of course, the cheater method, which I've shown you in this video here, is, is, is a really good way to do it. So uh, let's say another one here. What is the cheapest uh, tool to bend tubes for a roll cage that does a decent job? Uh, well, there's that classic saying, uh, which one do you want more? Do you want the less expensive or do you want the best job? Well, that's really up to you to decide. Now, there are some very inexpensive benders out there, and uh, some of them, uh, you see the one that, uh, where the die itself kind of sits on, a, uh, on an axis where it sits up vertical, and then the actual, there's a bottle jack that presses and draws the tube like this. Um, it's kind of an A-frame style bender. Now, there are a lot of brands out there that have that style uh, type of bender, but, uh, and, and a lot of people report back that it works well. Me personally, I've never used it, but, uh, it is one of those situations where uh, sometimes uh, it won't really bend, from what I've heard or my understanding of it, is it won't bend much more than 65, 70 degrees. Getting a 90 out of it is kind of ambitious. And uh, the radius on it, for example, is, uh, is much greater than, uh, I'd say, one for a JD Square. Plus, the, with the JD Square models, the, uh, the die selection is a lot better. So, um, inexpensive, I believe it is, uh, but to get exactly what you want, you might, not, you might not be anywhere near what you want, and it might be a big hassle out of it. Um, as far as uh, cost is concerned, there are very similar styles. And uh, even one, one viewer said he was writing in uh, using the, I believe, uh, chopper handbook method of bending where you can uh, you get the prints or whatever and you can go send out to laser cutting or 
whoever to actually cut out the shapes or whatever, and then you just buy the dies accordingly. That's another method that you can use. But you gotta really think about how much and how often you're going to be doing bending. So if you're gonna build cages for a lot of people, for example, then uh, you know, you're gonna wanna buy a really good bender. And the reason why is uh, eventually it will pay for itself and you don't have to worry about like in the middle of a project or a cage or something, you break your, your tooling or your bender or whatever the case is because it was an inexpensive model. So you wanna make sure that one will, will last you for many, many years and many, many projects throughout anything that you ever do. And uh, you know, of course, it's going to pay for itself in the long run if you plan to do this professionally or even uh, kind of on the side or whatever the case is. Are there any ways to bend tubing without having a tubing bender? And that also works in conjunction with uh, some people wanting to see the different methods or the hacks about bending tube in a pipe bender. Uh, the short answer, no. I'm not going to make a video like that that will demonstrate that and the reason why. Uh, when you bend tube in a profile where it's not designed to be bent in, let's say example tube in a pipe bender, the pipe size dies, aside from usually being the wrong size, they will not support or, or, or help <laughs> bend the tube correctly. And when I say that, what happens is when you press up uh, inward on a pipe bender, for example, the outside wall will collapse inward, the inside wall will push or crush inside, and the walls themselves on the outside of the profile, which would be the top and bottom of the walls themselves, they will expand. And you end up with a bend that will not support, help, or hold anything. And uh, absolutely not. I will not, I will not uh, suggest that anybody try to do that. Yes, I know there's a lot of hacks out there. I know that there's a lot of different methods that people use to claim a great deal of success. But at the end of the day, are you really trusting your life into something that you can't guarantee is going to you know, actually save you? And uh, that's one of those things you really have to be truthful with yourself here. And at the end of the day, I would suggest that most of the time where you're trying to spend the money getting your hack set just right, uh, you probably already could have gone and bought the correct bender. So um, is there another way to bend tubes without the use of a tube bender? Yes, there are tons of them. I can't suggest a single one of them. Uh, you know, some people would wrap it around a tree and say, yes, this will do. But you know what, hey, that works for them. I can't suggest doing that, I never will. Because there's the right tool for the right job and that is using a tubing bender to bend your tubes with. Which center line radius is best to use on the dies that you have? Well, let's go back to that rule of thumb. Very, very important. Rule of thumb, diameter times three is your minimum center line radius. But also check with the rule book. Always, always, always consult the rule book. Whatever is in print is what the rule is. Now, most of the rules regarding roll cage follow that rule of diameter times three for their minimum requirement. So whatever it is, make sure that you double check the sanction and the class that you will be running in for the correct minimum center line radius. Most of them are diameter times three, some are not. Always check the rule is in print, not with anything that anybody else says. What's the best bender for a newbie? Well, that's, um, you know, it's really hard to say. Uh, you know, I, the first time I started bending, I went out and bought myself a big giant hydraulic tube bender known as the Tube Shark. Great bender, but I get a lot more control out of the JD squared and the price is, is a lot better than the original one that I bought. So uh, I would suggest something like the JD Squared or similar. It's a fantastic bender. The support is all there and there's a massive selection of dies. There are other companies that make a similar style mechanical bender like that. You just got to search them out. How do I find that bender in my country? Uh, you know what? On Facebook, I have a couple of different links where vendors, uh, and viewers have sent links in for vendors in other countries that have JD Squared vendors and similar. You can also go to the JD Squared website and, uh, and click and see if you can find a vendor near you in your country. Now, if you do find one, please share it with me and uh, so I can post up and let everybody else know. Can I do exhaust work? Yes and no, that really all depends. Uh, exhaust work, this JD Squared Model 3 bender that I have maxes out at two inch tube. At the same time, it's not really meant for bending thin wall tube. Most exhaust tubing is, uh, is an 065 or a, uh, a 1 16th of an inch wall thickness, which means it needs a very large uh, center line radius to bend without kinking it. Um, it's a different style of bender, not like this one. It would be a mandrel style bender that uses, uh, there's actually a piece that goes inside of the tube uh, that forms it and helps keep the walls intact as it bends around, around the actual die itself or you know, with use of a mandrel, it bends it around that. That's how you get the really tight radius ones. Um, I have done header tubes with this and I needed uh, headers to do a very gracious uh, style of bend, much like you see on like the old school Toyotas and stuff like that. Now I've done that with these 
and I did the 065 wall just, just fine, no problems. Yes, theoretically for some pieces you could use a manual bender like this to do exhaust work, but you are limited up to whatever size die and center line radius that will uh, be accepted into the tube and not kink it. So in this case it's 2 inch, so not much that I could really do with that, but it's possible. Now, is there anything that you would recommend, software or um, schools or anything like that to be uh, That's another one that I get all the time about schools, um, software, books, publications, whatever the case is. There are many of them out there that will teach you many the same as what I've done here in the, in the, uh, in the video here. But um, at the same time, I haven't done... I haven't read a whole lot of them. Most of my education is formal and of course the hands-on and all the rest of this stuff. If you really want to know how to fabricate or how to do all of this, you should get yourself into a vocational school. There are quite a few of them out there that will teach you fabrication and get yourself a, uh, a basically a foot in the door type of education which will get you started in a shop. Now most of this stuff you learn from experience. If you know the basics like I have demonstrated in this video, you can go out there now and start bending tubes and creating your own mock-ups and then learning and discovering more and more as we go. You can also write me, ask me questions, whatever the case is, and I will always point you in the direction that I know is a, is a good, safe, trusted, reliable method in which to learn. Now, um, that's kind of the best I can give you as, as far as that one is concerned. Uh, it's, there's a lot of schools out there. There are a lot of, uh, lot of reference material and everything like that. Um, it's kind of hit or miss if they, if they do a good job on teaching you and helping you understand or if they don't. That's really entirely up to the person learning. So if you have any more questions, I encourage you very much. You can send me a message on, on Facebook. You can DM me on Instagram. You can send me a message here on YouTube. You can post up in the comments. You can always email me. Uh, on the fabricatorseries.com. You can post up in the build blocks in the in the build blogs in the comments section below. You can anyway, there's so many ways to get a hold of me if you have any questions about this. And I always try my best to get back to everybody and respond to all of them. Every now and again I miss, but uh, you know, typically I'll I'll find it a you know a few weeks later and I'll definitely try to get back to you as best as possible. So if you have any questions, please do absolutely write me, ask the questions. It's the only way you're gonna get your answers. So that's all I have for this episode of the Fabricator Series. I want to thank you guys very, very much for watching, as always, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.